Hello and welcome back to Advancing Spark. And uh, this week we are digging into the thing called AQE, the Adaptive Query Engine. Now, this should be super exciting to everybody, but I feel like that guy who found a YouTube video and was making people watch it and sitting next to him going, huh? Huh? It's great, right? It's great. And everyone's going, eh, it's all right. And it's not. It's really, really cool. It is super exciting. And I'm going to show you why. So first of all, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ask if you've got any comments about what you'd like to do in the future, but otherwise, let's have a look at AQE. Okay, so it was announced back at the Spark and AI Summit. It is part of Spark 3.0, part of the new wave. It is available GA, fully able to use it in production in Databricks Runtime 7 currently. Now, there is a blog out on it, and uh, we've linked to this before, and I mentioned it when I was doing my roundup of the news uh, around Spark 3 and all that kind of stuff. And so you can go and have a dig through there and have a look, and it tells you some nice things, coalescing shuffle partitions and all that kind of stuff. But you don't really get it until you look at it, until you try it, until you go, oh, yeah, okay, that's why that's really cool. So luckily, one thing to do right at the top, there's a link to that notebook, so you can go follow that link, takes you to this, which is just a straightforward notebook you can import into Databricks. Now, I've been a little cheeky and just gone through, pulled out a load of this code, pulled it into my own notebook, and I'm just stepping through going, well, actually, what happens before and after? Because everything they've got in here just shows, let's turn it on, and hey, this is cool, but they don't really show you the before AQE, this happened. After AQE, this happened. So I want to kind of make more of that point. Let's just have a look at it. So everything's based on this one. You can get that notebook yourself. Just go on to Databricks. I'll pop a link uh, down below, uh, but you can go and have a look. So got a runtime on. I'm in Databricks. Um, there's an initial SQL statement that's going off. It's creating something in a local hive table. Well, actually, it's uh, an AQE demo DB uh, hive table. It's creating some stuff. Um, and then we can have a play with that. So I've taken their SQL and I've pulled it into just a quick data frame. That's fairly standard, that's fine. Uh, and we run a quick display. Just show me what's in there, it goes off, does the things. It's got 360 rows and it takes 34 seconds. So again, we can just check that um, and give it a run and see what's going on. You might not be able to check that because I think I've turned a UE on already. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, okay, so let's do that. So firstly, gonna make it false. So the whole thing hangs around this bad boy. So in runtime seven, or Spark 3, wherever you're using it, spark.sql.adaptive.enabled is where do you want adaptive query uh, turned on or not? And by default, it's turned off. And I don't know why, because it is this magic go faster button. It is this big, I just want things to run better, uh, but you have to say, I want it turned on. So first, let's just make sure it's turned off. So double check, is it turned off? Yes. Now let's go and do this. So I've been stepping through turning it on and off, and I just want to make sure we've got a fair level playing field. Now I'm only going to run a couple of these things. But one or two of their demos take, and I've got a tiny cluster running, and it takes seven or eight minutes to run. And you will sit there for eight minutes watching me talk while a query runs. Uh, and this one should only take a minute to do. So while it's running, we can actually go and have a look and say what's happening. First of all, we can see there's two stages. So the query that's running, it's doing a group by. So I'm saying I want to take this, I want to aggregate by quantity, I want to group by date. And so because it's got those elements in there, it's going, oh, I'm going to have to do a shuffle, I'm going to have to do an exchange. So I did have 26 RDDs, 26 partitions of my data. I've now got 200. Now, if you are in the know, if you are used to playing around with Spark, that 200 will be ringing some warning bells. You're like, oh, I, I, 200, I see. Because there's another one of those uh, config elements, another one of these jobbies, which is to do the Spark SQL partitions, the default shuffle partitions. And that's set to 200. And that is an age-old thing that is just been set to 200 for a long, long time. If at any point in a query, Spark has to shuffle data as a result of the SQL query execution engine. It picks 200 as the number of partitions. Now, 90% of the time, that's the wrong answer. It's kind of like the, you know, the stop clock is right twice a day, 200. Occasionally it's right, but it's really not very often. 
Um, so we see 200. And if you're looking at your stage, you've said, okay, what happened when I hit go? I've got several stages, each of which has tasks, and the tasks are the number of blocks your uh, data is built up into. And in this case, if you see 200, you go, oh, it's using the default shuffle partitions. Now for 360 rows, 200 partitions is insane. That's basically one or two rows per partition, which makes zero sense. So essentially, each one of these, essentially rows one and two might be a partition. That might be another partition. That might be another partition. And that makes zero sense whatsoever. And yet that is the default way that Spark works. We can test that. We can go look in our view, see what's happening. We can go, after we see, we've got those two things that happened. So 26 tasks and then 200 tasks. And we can say what happened in our SQL query. It just ran some stuff. So to the column in a row, did an aggregate, exchanged it, see in the exchange what's going on, how much data it's writing there. And it's really not a huge amount of uh, data. Then it aggregates it up. That, so that's pretty, pretty terrible, really. Okay, so let's do that change. So we said, no, nope, we don't want it false. We want Spark SQL adaptive uh, enabled. It's now enabled. And then we can run the same thing. Now this one still runs pretty quick, so we can say run. And again, just doing a display. And just show me what the data looks like. And already we can see we've no longer got that 200. So the actual execution path has changed. It's no longer saying you will definitely run as these two steps, that two stages, 26, and then 200. It's now saying, well, there's just one stage of 26, and then there'll be a separate job I'll come in, which is just pulling it back. So it's changed how it's executing. It's using that adaptive query execution engine, which is great. So we jump in and say, well, what are you actually doing in there? We can again go and have a look at the associated SQL query and say, what's going on? And we get this custom shuffle reader. That is the sign that it's doing something to do with AQE. It's when, wait, 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 I don't want to read back 200. I want to interject. I want to stop this execution and go do something different, work out something sensible. And in this case, it's just doing something tiny. So, and I'm also down at the bottom, we can say, make it an adaptive Spark plan. So you can check, am I actually using AQE here? Yes, I am. If I see that at the bottom, that's, it's made the plan at the end going, this should be an AQE one. But I can see that's just generally gone a lot faster. So even with that small job, so that's 25 seconds compared to 26 seconds, not the best example, um, but it's just doing more sensible stuff. So when you're throwing a ton of data at it, when you actually got really, really big, chunky data sets, that performance just gets so much better. But also, you don't have to remember to set that default shuffle partitions. That, oh, ah, you've 200, you've not remembered to override it something sensible for your cluster, for the particular problem that you're looking at, or you've not remembered to put a data frame dot repartition in there. You don't have to. This is going to do something more sensible for you. In this case, go, well, actually, I can just combine a load of stuff. I can make it a little bit more sensible. So number one, essentially, it's um, to do with partition coalescing. So it spits out a load of partitions, goes, right, I'm dealing with, wait, is that sense? No, let's do far fewer partitions, which coalesces them. And that is just a huge performance boost. So that's number one thing, super good. But have a look at that display plan. Look at how it changes the number of tasks that you have. And even the number of stages that you have, if it cuts out the need to exchange, which is great. Okay, next bit that we got. So we're going back to false. Uh, and it's just a SKU query. So it's that same data set that got set up right at the start. Uh, and it's doing a bit of a join. It's doing a range kind of uh, filter. So it's got a few things going on. Uh, and we're just pulling out the explain plan. We're saying, what are you going to do? When I say go, what are you going to try and do? In this case, it's going to sort and exchange, has to go various things. And that's the one that we're like, oh, no, that's not going to be good. A sort merge join. You're going to take both data sets, sort them both, and then try and. No, that's not going to go fast. That's going to go very, very slow. Um, and so that's, that's the bad. You see that, you're like, mm, okay. It'll be okay, but just don't do it with massive data sets. Um, so in this case, you know, that was bad. When I ran that, I'm not going to run it this time, but that took eight minutes. So I was sitting there going, what is it doing? Running and running and running, and it wasn't very good. Now, if we have a look at actually what happened inside here, so we can say what was going on at that stage. 
We'd see the various different stages and, oh, okay, there's one stage that took a long time. Again, lots of that 200. So she's using the default number of um, shuffle partitions. And if we dig in there and say, what, what was going on inside there? Uh, we can actually, yeah, so I've sorted by duration. And actually, it's just one task. So most of that, like 199 of those shuffle partitions was over in four seconds. It was ticking through them going, yeah, this is easy, this is easy, this is easy. And then 6.8 minutes with a whole load of spilling out to memory, spilling out to disk, doing the expensive stuff where he goes, oh, no, that's too big. And then just starts vomiting data everywhere. That's the bad thing. So this is all to do with skew, obviously. So this is, we try to sort on a particular key and we try to kind of join a particular key. And then one of those keys actually had all of our data in there and bad times happened. It suddenly took a long, long time. So that was, that was the bad path. We don't like that. That is not the way forward. Um, so and then again, said, make it true. Let's see what AQE can do with that. And again, if you look at the explain plan, it's the same thing. So when I say, here's a data frame, what are you going to do with it? It goes, well, I'll, I'll obviously do a sort merge join because that's how I join these things. That, that just makes sense. Um, and then when you actually run it, the time took 1.96 minutes. It's a hell of a lot quicker. So that's the, the weird thing to get used to with this adaptive query execution is it doesn't tell you it's going to do it up front. It adapts when it realizes it's going wrong. So it's not like there's a whole new different query plan that goes, oh, I know what's going to happen here. It's more when it starts, it doesn't see it through to the bloody end. It goes, oh, wait, no, let's just do something sensible. Um, so in this case, stages, I do a lot fewer stages. It knows it doesn't need to do that horrendous um, thing moving around. And you can see the number of uh, partitions I'm dealing with is a lot more sensible. It hasn't gone for the full default shuffle partition to 200 all the way through. Said it needed 20, 26, then an eight. And I should see there are a lot more reasonable if we dive into it. Okay, so there we go. So it's like much more evenly skewed. I've got loads of different tasks that each took 32 seconds rather than one absolute beast of a task that took all of the time in the world. Okay, so that just makes sense. That's like a nice demo. And again, you can follow it through. Again, definitely recommend grabbing this demo and having a look at how that works. Um, I'm gonna they kind of just talk about it as they're going through, but it doesn't show you what happens in the bad path. So that one, that is the starting to go down one path and then go, wait, I can do it a different way. If we have a look at what actually happened on the query plan, Mm. Okay, so we can see the query plan. We can see it doing some stuff. We can see that custom shuffle reader coming to effect. So it's actually looking at the number of partition and going, wait, 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 we can change this. We don't need to go to 200. Um, and then it's doing a broadcast hash join. It's not doing that sort merge join. So it's looked at the amount of data it had and went, wait, that's tiny. I don't need to do a sort merge. You know, I can actually just put that same data set on all of my workers and then I don't have to worry about shuffles and distributions and any of that kind of stuff. I can just do a really straightforward, cheap join. So it did some work. It looked at the results. It made a better plan as a result. Again, it's an adaptive query engine. It's, it's cool. Um, and then the final one we're looking at, again, similar thing. It's going to do some stuff. Um, so this one is just, again, another join. Uh, and I pulled that through. And again, that took 8.85 minutes. That took a long time pulling all that through. Again, doing a similar thing. So pull in some data, do some stuff, and then do lots of stages that are very big and very expensive. So looking there, we can see there was one of those stages, that like third stage just took all of the time. It took seven minutes to try and figure out what was going on. Again, in here, once again, skew's gone bad. So there's one big old task that is taking all of the time, spilling out a load of stuff, and it's not good. So we want to do something about it. Uh, we take a step back. We can have a look at that job. I've run this job since. Let's just go straight back to the view. Get a look at the execution plan that's associated. So it's doing some stuff. It's pulling some data in. It's doing an exchange, doing another sort merge join. Again, just doing expensive things on the way through. We run it again. So turn on um, AQE. So run it again. And we're going to down to three minutes. Again, it's not suddenly changing it into this now takes milliseconds, but it's just giving you real good 
hardcore performance benefits that as this gets, you know, this is a small example that took eight minutes. If you're dealing with a query that took an hour before, then you're going to see just these massive scaling reductions in time as it gets a lot more efficient with how it's doing this stuff. So again, we pull this out, so what's actually doing in there? Pulling some stuff through. It's doing that custom shuffle reader. We can actually say it's looking at the number of partitions and going, no, I need to do something more sensible. In this case, it's passing in a SKU uh, join hint. So saying, okay, well, actually, I can see that this is a skewed join. Why don't we actually do something a bit more sensible about how we actually bring these things together? Maybe take some of the really small partitions and combine them into a bigger one. So rather than doing 200 tiny ones and one big one, actually, we just make it a little bit more balanced about how it's actually tackling, tackling all this stuff, which is, again, just sensible and makes a lot of sense. If we dig into tasks, yeah, so we just see much more balance in terms of how it's done. Okay, so they're, they're the three big arguments. And again, it goes through all of these. You've got the, the switch uh, strategies and you've got the skew hint. There you go, dynamically optimized skew join. Go through that demo, have a look at what that's doing. But also definitely recommend you do what I've done. Pull those demos into your local environment, run them with it turned on and run them with it turned off, and have a look at those execution plans to get a good grip with what it's doing. When I first saw this, I was like, Okay, I mean, you know, skew joints, great, but how often is the data that skewed? Um, but then because it's, there's no real overhead that I've seen in terms of how it's running these queries, because it's only when it's actually doing it. Sure, if you're doing lots of really, really small queries that weren't doing that much and they were all fairly, fairly kind of tuned, then it's going to be, there's a little overhead in terms of it stopping and thinking what it's doing, but that's tiny in the grand scheme of things. Um, whereas here, if you've got, a load of users, and you didn't realize that they're all actually joining on the sale date. And you've got an actual fiscal date key that you want people to join on, but they've got a different date key and they keep writing queries and wondering why it goes slow because Black Friday's in there with all of the data in the world and they hadn't quite realized that. Suddenly you've got a SKU join. You've got SKU happening inside your query that you didn't plan for. Um, certainly that first example, the biggie is that you don't have to have as much attention about that 200, the, the default shuffle partitions config setting, because it's going to look at that and go, yeah, you know what, I'll figure it out better. So those two things just means you can turn it on and then worry a lot less about the kind of queries your users are writing, and then just suddenly see a lot of things go faster. And if things go faster, generally means you need to have less grunt in your cluster, or you can do more things with your cluster. So there's just a whole load of stuff that's enabled by this that I think it's personally quite exciting. And yes, I know I'm a massive Spark nerd, and I know some people won't find it that exciting. But for me, the fact there's a new config switch that I can just go, turn it on, make a load of things go faster, and not have to worry as much about training end users and designing data marts in such a way that I'm tricking people into hitting certain columns and using only filtering with certain things, that makes my life so much easier, and why wouldn't I be excited about that? All right, so that's all for today. Uh, any questions on AQE or anything that you found or anything that you found that actually just sped things up and especially anything you found that slowed things down? Love to hear about it. Drop us a note in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll drop up some videos and a subscribe button so you can hit those and be on your way. So we'll see you next time. Cheers.